Greetings and welcome to my channel, Meta Messiah. I have a great video for you here today. Speaking of an alliance, <clears throat> excuse me, an alliance, a axis, um, and to join two crypto communities, and that is Dejitaro Sukas and Kanagawa Namis, Suka and Okanami. Um, and I've kind of felt my own Milarepa uh, style um, coming to terms with a number of things. I've, I've, I've talked about Sukkah a number of times before, and I just like was thinking, okay, something feels like it's lacking in this. And part of what was lacking was my research in Sukkah. I, I mean, I have to look at myself in all this, and that's actually a very meditative and Buddhist thing. Is well, I need to look at me. So I looked within and I did my own meditations. I realized, okay, let's do some research. I did some serious research into Dejitar Suka. And I'm like, hang on a second here. The, the, there's some code similarities. There's some block chain messaging that looks very similar. Imagery very similar with the, um, I see the dragon in the water all the time and, and the Mount Fuji. And so there is, the writings on the wall, uh, especially with respect to how important the Buddhist Sita Milarepa is to Sukha, which is actually connected very strongly to Okanami because our dev messages, maybe Ryoshi as well, who's writing on the blockchain about climbing Mount Kailash. There's only one dude, a very important master of meditation, a redemptive figure is you know, Buddhist and important uh, teacher of meditation in many ways is Milarepa, the Milarepa, Jetson Milarepa, okay? That's his full name. And, uh, you know, in terms of um, Sangyang Huruka and writing the songs of Milarepa and all that, if you, I've read some of it a little bit, listened to some videos, I'm like, okay, I'm seeing some definite connected connections here. But it was the actual blockchain movements and the wallets and the amount of Ethereum, amount of money in these wallets. Um, SHIB deployer wallet connection, okay, various things like that. And then, of course, you have Okanami, 40 days. Okanami was 40 days, folks, before the SHIB deployer wallet. Four years ago, 40 days. Um, that's very odd. Uh, the Both of the tokens actually launch roughly 40 days apart. Suka first, four days later, Ryoshi Research Twitter account, boom, Milarepa as the avatar. And uh, that was four days after Suka stealth launch. Both stealth, both are stealth launched, fair launch, whatever you want to call it, locked liquidity, no dev wall. It's completely, completely community. Um, uh, it, with the aspect of maybe the websites, I don't know if ours is community or dev. I think it's dev, but theirs might be community. Um, which the websites are not even really, they're, they're basically moot. Um, and I agree with that because the community is going to build a website and eventually when the devs actually start doing some things, there'll be more website development that corresponds probably web three, I would think as well. Uh, a dot IO, something that's more sexy in the whole crypto world, not a dot com. Um, selling addresses and things like that is also a big thing and you want to be up with the times and the, this and that um but whereas today i was doing a lot of thinking and and uh reflecting and meditating upon it um the fact that suka wants to be a base layer of the DeFi wave coming okay this new era of, of DeFi and and suka being the base layer like bitcoin Okay, this is maybe like Asian-themed Bitcoin, <laughs> Buddhist Bitcoin. If you're in Asia, if you're in Japan, if you're in China, if you're in Korea, it, it, you know, any of the Buddhist countries, there's many of Buddhist countries all around Asia, Vietnam, all these nations that love crypto. Actually, Vietnam loves crypto quite a bit. Um, and I think Japan's about on the precipice of really loving crypto. Their, con their economic structures with the World Bank and uh, worldwide banking, um, it's not good in Japan right now. The, the switch to uh, cryptocurrencies, um, CBDCs, unfortunately, have to be a part of the mix. Um, but that's part of the, the, that's part of the predatory nature. You have to have predator and prey. 
but they can both prey upon each other. There's competition, major competition, government fiat versus and, and centralized fiat uh, versus government crypto, CBDCs, centralized bank crypto, CBDCs. And then you have the DeFi world, which is these, you know, border border they're borderless communities. They're ubiquitous in a sense. They can be all around the world. You, you know, who, who's the lead dev? Who, who's, we don't know for sure, really. They're allowed to operate in a certain level of secrecy, and that's why the SEC hates them, because they, they, they do operate like little secret societies, and that's because it's trade secrets. You can't copyright. You can't, once you do an intellectual property, you register it with the government. I'm an, I'm an attorney in, in my former uh, career actually going to court and learning copyright law and almost getting into, into that area. I studied it in law school. You, you don't want to do a, a, any intellectual properties on your crypto codes. The, the meat and potato stuff of the devs, you know. Uh, people might copyright some things outside of it, but the community can own that. Nobody owns it. It's not like a corporation. It's not like shares. It could be a DAO. But it could be a, a, a governance, but that's just a voting right. But these are people all around the world. It's not even. It's not stocks. It's not equities. Gary Gensler is insane. He just hates crypto. There's a lot of people that just hate crypto. Like... You know, Senator Warren, she hates crypto. You know, not not everybody on the left hates it, okay? Not everybody on the right loves it. Um, a lot more people on the right tend to like it, love it. And it just the people on the left are starting to understand it. And I think a lot more are starting to get into it. So mass adoption's coming. Both political parties, both sides are going to come up with some rules and regulations. It's just going to be regulated like the internet. It's just like, it's just like when the World Wide Web started. Okay, so we're at the precipice of this major shift, Web3. The internet revolution has moved into its next phase with internet money. Instead of fiat, think of cryptocurrency as internet money. But you can actually buy a lot of things on the internet, and people will trade it. Most of our commerce online is, look, look at what you do at Amazon. Look at what you do with eBay, okay? We use PayPal, but if somebody's like, you pay me crypto, that's fine. That's pretty fast and easy now. But it has to be really fast, really easy. It has to be low cost and reliable and still maintain privacy. So Okanami coming out with likely a very important layer two scaling and, shard, and, and, and using sharding, dank sharding and so on. Uh, it's, it's an important ERC-20 development, probably connected to EIP-4844. Um, and so this layer two is going to do a lot to make, bring down costs of ETH. As you bring down the cost of ETH, and this is basically a vehicle for doing that, it's probably going to be usable throughout the ERC-20 network. And it's like bone, like on Shibarium. It's like bone on Shibarium. It's just going to, it's going to serve that function. Yes, it's going to, and bone is going to become probably super valuable after the public launch of Shibarium. Okay. Everything's in the test phase with Shibarium, and it's yet not because it's going to come live and we're going to get data on the beta and the public, and then you're going to see this new layer rising, this new this new empire of crypto, and I do think it's going to be Dejitar Suka. I mean, they're they're bringing in the money, they're getting in the liquidity, their community. There's a lot of big insiders here. I, I know there's a lot of big people in on this. A lot of deep pockets in on this, and the wallet connections I do see now bring Okanami in focus, and I think Okanami bringing Suka in focus with its blockchain connections, vice versa. Suka can now, Suka can now bring in Okanami in focus with these blockchain connections. I do have a very important video on the link. Please watch it. it tells you more about the Okanami blockchain um evidence that's out there we got in the telegram that's links in the description as well if you're in a suka community member please read and find out more I, I i've been reaching out to you guys on twitter and in your telegram and trying to find out more and more trying to be quiet i don't want to be a disturbance or I, and I, the last thing i want to do is fud in your groups and so on and so forth but i do like to try to gather information and the information i'm gathering reading through the suka journal um, reading more about Milarepa, and again, this Buddhist connection. I mean, Mount Fuji is a very important holy site in Japan to Buddhists and other people, just not even Buddhists. Shinto, all these people is a very holy site to them to climb it, to view it. You'll see that, and you saw it in the Suka's art. There's Mount Fuji, there's the dragon. 
the dragon under the sea. And okay, Ur- Urashima Taro. Urashima Taro is the fisherman who is the avatar on the Okanami Twitter account. And I believe on the medium as well. And that's who the Oto, Otohima, Otohina, or, uh, uh, the, the princess, the dragon princess, they go on the turtle under the sea to the dragon, dragon palace under the sea. And that's Urashima, the Ryoshi, he's a fisherman, a Ryoshi. Um, she, the princess and him go on to the turtle. He marries her. He has wealth. He has love. He has everything. He just found freaking the best life, you know, outside of moving from home. He, he's a young guy. He goes back to his wife and, and you know, in the palace. And he's like, I'm going to go. I miss my family. I want to go home. I need to see him one more time. She's like, okay, if you do that, you break your promise. Here's a little treasure box. If you want to see me again, you got to open it. And he goes home and wakes up like almost from a dream it's like 300 years later everybody's dead essentially and then he dies he just crumbles to the ground and dies um after he op- but that's after he opened the box he, he, he uh so he sees that his you know 300 years has passed he, he he can't go back he had everything and he, he comes back he lost everything he loses everything so he opens the box okay and that's when the gas the air comes out of it the smoke Makes him 300 years older, he dies. He might have seen her in heaven. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know if they believe in heaven. It wouldn't, that doesn't fit within a Buddhist um, belief system. It just return to the consciousness and just be like, whatever, maybe reincarnated or whatever. Um, but the, <laughs> the bigger point is, <laughs> um, you know, there's these very, very cool imageries and. I do say that in a, from a Buddhist standpoint, like I said, I've told people before, I'm a lazy Zen Buddha, very lazy. I don't study enough. I don't meditate enough. But I also have kids to take care of. And life ain't easy when you have family. <laughs> okay. But I try to do as much as I can. So I, so I really do I really do dig the Sukha meditations. Um, I really dig the imagery. The dragon is all over Sukha. You know, you see the dragon all over their stuff. It's, you'll see, you've seen it in the video. Um, you, you've seen Mount Fuji and you've seen also the wave, the water, all those imageries are in the art. I'm like, this is sub- you're, this, all these ciphers, all these codes, all this stuff is being, there's lots of communication going on subliminally. You don't have to use words to communicate things. Okinawa people, I think we've missed a huge thing. If you've been listening this far, words are not the only way of communicating art in pictures, our way of communicating. This is DeFi. This is a great way to, to communicate and code like, you know, the, the wind talkers in World War II, you know? Uh, speaking Cherokee or whatever, Apache or whatever, uh, Native American ab- Aboriginal language, Americas, um, that was the code for the war, you know? So the so Germans wouldn't know who you were because it made no They couldn't decipher it. Um, but you couldn't... you. You could maybe decipher some of the language looking at the pictures on the walls in their art. If you look at Native American art, I bet you could start to decipher some of it. And if you heard them talking and made a connection, you'd have to find a common connection with a word that you know means that picture. Same with in the East, pictures are in the art. They, they, the, the, the language and the writing in Chinese and in uh, Japanese and in... Um, all kinds of uh, Asian languages, Korean, with their language, the way they write it is image. It looks more like images than words. And they read right to left, and they go right down. I think up down, and then to the next. So right to left, and then up to down, up to down. They don't even read like the Western world. It's very hard to understand this stuff if you live in the Western world. Okay, it's taken me many years to try to understand. I still don't understand a lot about eastern thought but i'm some of it starting to make a lot of sense now that i'm older maybe it took life experience to get there and actually practicing some of what they uh, have taught uh, whether you look at even taoism or confucianism you know you know hinduism even is, is from the east and it's very important too it's the underlying basis of a lot with buddhism too um uh in that part of the world and so there's a lot of connections in the philosophies of both Uh, the teachings of both but that's neither here nor there you know and so i digress 
Um, there's something very special going on, okay? Um, and it's in the imagery, it's in the art, it's in the pictures. Just like how you can communicate with things that are not necessarily Western style ways of com communication, using just words. Uh, we have saw that. A lot of us know that. A lot of us, not everybody is recognizing this, but a lot of us in the Okanami group are saying, yeah, yeah, we get it. We see it. There's pictures, all these things. We've got to analyze all the evidence, all what's there. I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it pointing to Suka. This, even in the storyline, the narratives are connected through Urashima Taro and through um, Milarepa and through, you know, the dragon imagery, you know, various layers, layer upon layer, even the number five. There was a Suka, you saw it in the video too, it was posted up there. There was a Suka tweet about winning something or maybe a contest. But I've seen the, I've seen the number five, numbers not just five, but four today, it came out four. Uh, different numerology is, is important to that part of the world. Um, so at any rate, um, I'll pause right there because let me think about something. There's another thing I want to add. You know, I, I, it's hard. It's hard to explain a lot of the stuff, but a lot of this comes from conviction. A lot of it comes from faith. A lot of it is circumstantial. Nothing is a, like a, a true smoking gun. Nothing is like. I mean, I used, like I said, I mean, used to do all this, go to the court and stuff. I know evidence enough and rules of evidence to know when it's concrete. There's nothing concrete. And in the world of DeFi, I don't know if you want it to be that way. I don't think you do. I really don't think you do. And so with the imageries I'm seeing, the strongest nexus between any two tokens right now with all of these Buddhist Ryoshi stories behind them with the Suzumis, the Hachis, you know, the Hoichis and the um, Sakuras and, and so on and so forth. Um, don't know about Ka, though. I think maybe Ka is another project that Ryoshi's got his fingers in. So, and I think I know who you are, but I won't, I'm not going to say, I won't say uh, in, in my YouTube videos. You can read in the telegrams. Um, I have an idea of maybe a few of who you are, and that's cool. It's great. I think it's all good, uh, very good, uh, especially to launch these things off the ground. But and anyhow, um, of all the tokens I've been looking at, um, and putting aside some of these others that have an Asian, Eastern thought, Buddhist type narrative and thread throughout the stories uh, Suka and Okanami you know having come out what end of May 2022 and then um, early July or so in uh, sometime in July 2022 for Okanami like I said almost I think close to 40 days apart when they emerge on the blockchain uh, as far as being able to purchase the stealth launch dates um, and just the fact that like the stuff that the Okanami dev says, a lot of it now that I read Suka's stuff, there are so many philosophical, um, deep idea, Eastern uh, Buddhist type thoughts and, and sayings and imageries. And all I can say is a type of linguistics and cryptic communication that I get it. I see there's got to be a connection. Uh, a lot of talk to, I learn about, you know, Shirudo, to the shield, Shirudo, and then there's another one, I don't know its full name, but it's called Blade. Um, they seem to be tokens now. There's tokens now, like with SHIB, that are coming up under the Suka um, base layer. Um, these could be possible side chains or other things, I don't know. Um, but there's now certain tokens, I think, that strongly, strongly connect uh, because the Suka people talk about it. They talked about uh, Shield and Blade, which is great. It's cool. Um, you know, I saw another one like Tokoyo or something. It's the Dragon Slayer. Uh, Tokoyo has this, you know, a Asian or Japanese name to it. Uh, Tokoyo has a website that goes in a lot of stuff that seems to connect on the level of Ryoshi and DeFi. Um, guys that created, you know, Shiba Inu. Um, you know, I'm not sure who Shaitoshi is, but I bet he knows a little something about what's going on. Um, 
but you don't sit there and just talk about this stuff because you start confirming it. And it's a strategic disadvantage to reveal things at the wrong time. Okay? That's why stealth launches and cryptic communication and very easy to doubt information can be very powerful. It can get people to build a community around it. And then it could allow for a certain flow of information that's safe. Uh, and help build a project early and test it, get some testing in a real trading scenario, especially a DeFi trading scenario. So there could be information coming off the trading of the token. Uh, Suka is getting a lot of um, CEXs. Um, they're, get, they're not in crypto.com yet, but they just got a recent big one. Um, pretty sure they're on Binance. I, I, I bet you they're on Binance. Um, what was it recently? Who maybe not? Who be was a while ago. There, I, I can't come up with it right now. Um, uh, but trust me, they're, they're on a lot of centralized exchanges already. Their connections have to be absolutely amazing. Uh, they have the financing. I'm always going to be really skeptical. Of something I don't research enough. But if I had, I have to humble myself to say I never meant in any way to uh, FUD on Suka, but I just kept saying, I just don't see the evidence in terms of connection to the ETH developers. One of my big points is I just don't see these block blockchain connections in the way I'm seeing them with Okanami. And I'm like, well, naturally, because they're two different, they do two different things. These are s separate dev teams, but the code's similar enough to where they look joined. And that's an excellent thing. If we are joined in the language within the code, and so maybe other tokens have that too. Um, maybe Daruma, I don't know. We've been talking about that in the uh, Telegram as well. But this this is a relationship that's very important. Um, the fact that they came out the way they did, I don't think the code would have been just you know they would have hacked it to make it that it just wouldn't make sense to like it wouldn't make sense to just hack it like that and say we're copying each other we, we, you might want to instill just some general doubt in in terms of timing of events and because we have very little from the dev on okanami for quite some time it, it actually is helping the fud because silence for that long makes you wonder is it a rug pull what is it what's going on I don't think it is. Uh, this is not a scam. You could have pumped it up, made a ton of money, got it. If I was, if, this would be a stupid scam. Okanami would be like a, the scam of a, a very intelligent person who pull off all this stuff and then not make it very much money. All the dev had to do is like say a few things about the surge and make a fake roadmap and they could have pumped this thing crazy and then they could have crashed it. Okay? You'd be like, okay, you're not making much. And, uh, you could make way more. If you fooled people in this token, you could, you know, what get out. The scammers are not going to sit there and be like, um, you know, it's going to wait, you know, three months, four months, maybe. I don't know. I don't I don't need the money now. No, they don't. They they know they could, could have gotten more money riding off Suka's coattails and didn't do it. That's what a scammer would have done. They would have rode on Suka's coattails it would have made it look like this thing was huge surge token blah 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 you know and, and, and if if it wasn't a surge token that'd be devastating because everybody would sell it you know or most people would i mean if it was still another good utility if it was like yeah it's part of the surge but it's not what you think it is but it's still something really good that that would that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking like if it were just in hypothetical terms a scam this would be stupidest scam ever <laughs> Because, I mean, you don't have any tax. There's no tax on it. Most crypto projects have tax. You know, you could have manipulated the crap out of it with bots. You could have, you know, pumped it with messaging and even made it look kind of legit by pa giving long, dramatic pauses, but just kept pushing and pushing and pushing it. Um, so the community for Okinawa is very different um, than Suka's. But I think we need to be more disciplined in the research, and it's starting to get there. And I think the Suka people are going to appreciate that. Um, and that's something that Milarepa teaches with the meditations. It's, very, it's also a good thing for the Suka community. Um, 
it, it helps teach a lot of discipline. And a community has to have some level of discipline to make it successful. So I think Okanami, we have a lot to learn from the Suka community. And I think the Suka community has a lot to learn from Okanami's community. And it really could be that Okanami is like kind of the bone or the maybe sometime backbone to this whole structure. And the base, all the big, the meat and potatoes of it is Suka, which in other words, the, the big store of value, like a Bitcoin, they're already bringing in a lot of value, lots of liquidity, tons of liquidity. It would just make sense. And then here's Okanami coming in, this surge saying, okay, we're going to make it all fast and cheap and reliable. And everybody's like, heck yeah, we can trade without having to pay $100 to buy 20 bucks worth of some shit coin. <laughs> Which is during the last bull run. You'd buy like a, you'd only have maybe sometimes the last to trade and it'd just be like, man, I just spent all those gas fees and only got that. Um, for those that don't trade, it's high value, high dollar. Sometimes people, though, just do a small bet, small bet anyways. That's all they want to do. And they're like, yeah, not worth it. Gas is too expensive. Just imagine something that's facilitating it so you're looking at you know even just some transactions on eth being like around a dollar that would be phenomenal um but even to bringing it down to like half a dollar quarter quarter uh, it, it, and just as eth becomes more ubiquitous as the emerging economy for cryptocurrencies and mass adoption happens they're going to have to use up a lot of eth all over it's going to be the the gas of the internet in a sense, the gas of the I mean the gas of the internet money system, <laughs> um, and it's going to be huge. And so I think I think this video is well worth doing. I'm going to reach out um, to y'all Suka folks, and hopefully we can get somewhere with both of these things. I think it could be, this could be a really good alliance. As a side note, please like, subscribe, share, tell everybody about my channel. Um, give it a share, folks. Get the word out about this. It's really important. It's important for Suka, I think, too. As much as it, 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 Okanami at this point has a lot more to gain because we're nowhere near where Suka is, but I think we have a lot we can gain. And I think it's worth reaching out to these folks. I think we can talk and have a really productive um, discourse and dialogue. So at any rate, thank you again. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get a notice of my next video. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, folks. Thank <laughs> you.